His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco over the victims of the earthquake in Morocco that has killed and injured hundreds of people. His Majesty King Hamad expressed sincere condolences to the Moroccan King, people and the victims' families, praying to Allah the Almighty to bestow his vast mercy and forgiveness upon the victims and grant their families and loved ones solace and patience, wishing those injured speedy recovery. His Majesty the King affirmed the support and solidarity of the Bahraini government and people with Morocco in overcoming this natural disaster. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa directed the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, to dispatch urgent humanitarian relief aid to the Kingdom of Morocco to help alleviate their suffering in the aftermath of the earthquake that hit several regions in Morocco. His Majesty King Hamad's initiative reflects the strong historic ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Morocco and their people and is an embodiment of the Kingdom's approach of solidarity with other countries in such difficult times. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of condolences to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of the Kingdom of Morocco following the earthquake in Morocco, which left casualties and others injured. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, offered his sincere condolences to His Majesty King Mohammed VI to the relatives of the victims and the people of Morocco, praying to Allah the Almighty to bestow his vast mercy and forgiveness upon the victims and grant their families and loved ones solace and patience, wishing those injured speedy recovery. His Royal Highness affirmed the support and solidarity of the Bahraini government and people with Morocco in overcoming this natural disaster, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect the Kingdom of Morocco and its people. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, sent two similar cables to the Crown Prince of Morocco, His Royal Highness Moulay Hassan, and to the Prime Minister of Morocco, Aziz al Khanoush. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, Supreme Defense Council, Secretary General and Royal Humanitarian Foundation, RHF Board of Trustees Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended sincere thanks, appreciation and gratitude to RHF Honorary President, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, for His Majesty's constant humanitarian initiatives to extend relief aid to the afflicted and support the needy across the world as part of the Kingdom's efforts to consolidate global solidarity based on the fraternal and humanitarian ties by all people of the world. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the great support accorded by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the RHF affirming the foundation's readiness to implement His Majesty the King's directives. His Highness Sheikh Nasser emphasized Bahrain's solidarity with Morocco to help alleviate the suffering of those affected by the quake based on human duty required by the Islamic religion, the authentic Arab traditions and the solid Bahraini-Moroccan relations. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to protect Morocco's leadership and people and rest the souls of the victims in eternal peace, wishing the wounded a speedy recovery. For his part, RHF Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Said indicated that based on His Majesty the King's directives and His Highness Sheikh Nasser's instructions, the RHF has made the necessary arrangements in cooperation with the relevant ministries and authorities to provide the necessary relief aid to Morocco as quickly as possible. He affirmed that the RHF, led by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, will spare no effort in supporting those affected by the earthquake in order to alleviate the suffering of the victims' families. A powerful earthquake struck Morocco last night, measuring 7 degrees on the Richter scale, resulting in the deaths of hundreds of people and causing damage to buildings from villages in the Atlas Mountains to the historic city of Marrakesh. According to a statement issued by the Moroccan Ministry of Interior, 1,037 people were killed and 1,204 were injured. Moroccan television broadcasted scenes after the earthquake as many people remained outside in fear of aftershocks. The footage also showed emergency workers climbing over piles of rubble and collapsed walls in search of survivors. The epicenter of the earthquake was located 80 kilometers in the province of Huz, southwest of the city of Marrakesh, of Marrakesh and was felt and by residents of Moroccan cities within a radius of 400 kilometers. The National Institute of Geophysics in Morocco affirmed that the aftershocks following the earthquake or those that will follow will be less powerful and may not be felt by the population. Earthquake occurred as a result of sudden movement of rock layers beneath the Earth's surface, releasing tremendous kinetic energy from the Earth's interior towards its surface.
The president of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the 34th International Conference of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs in the Arab Republic of Egypt. The conference, entitled The Digital Space and Modern Means of Religious Discourse, was held under the patronage of Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, with the participation of several ministers, muftis, officials, scholars, preachers, and researchers. Sheikh Abdurrahman emphasized the importance of keeping pace with the era and its developments and making optimal use of its data and outcomes, emphasizing the need to regulate cyberspace and be cautious of its misuse or exploitation. He called on all active Islamic institutions worldwide to engage in constructive cooperation in the field of the digital space. He stressed the importance of encouraging the proper use of websites and electronic platforms and protecting communities from the dangers of their misuse. He also called for the establishment of clear Sharia regulations for utilizing the digital space in the areas of fatwa, religious discourse, and missionary work, as well as signing protocols between religious institutions regarding the responsible use of the digital space. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdurrahman al-Rasumi, emphasized the importance of establishing an advanced and modern legislative system with the aim of safety employing modern technology in the service of religious discourse. He emphasized that the legislative system should preserve the principles and foundations of Islam and also be compatible with the features of Arab and Islamic societies. In his speech delivered at the opening session of the 34th International Conference of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and the Ministry of Awqaf in Egypt, al-Rasumi highlighted the challenge challenges associated with the misuse and improper utilization of cyberspace as extremism terrorists or extremist terrorists, terrorist organizations have exploited it for self-promotion and remote recruitment targeting young people. al me affirmed that the Arab parliament emphasizes the necessity for all Arab and Islamic countries to keep pace with the modern technological revolutions and its applications in various fields including religious discourse. The National Health Regulatory Authority, NHRA, revealed the existence of five factories licensed by the authority to produce medical supplies and devices in the Kingdom of Bahrain. NHRA confirmed that it granted a license to the first pharmaceutical and healthcare factory in the Kingdom of Bahrain, Bahrain Pharma, which produces health supply, supplement, supplements. The authority also indicates that it is working on registering Gulf Biotech Factory for the production of drugs and injectable medication. It affirmed its keenness on enhancing partnership with the private sector and attracting various investments, including those in the healthcare sector, in line with the goals of the National Health Plan 2016-2025. Still to come in this bulletin. Greece, Turkey and Hong Kong experienced heavy rains and floods which saw dozens of lives lost in addition to extensive damage to infrastructure and economies. Stay tuned. The 18th G20 summit was launched in the Indian capital, New Delhi, under the slogan, One Earth, One Family, One Future. At the summit, leaders will discuss key issues related to trade, climate, energy, and other global problems. More than 30 heads of state and other top officials from the European Union are also set to attend the summit alongside several other delegates from invited guest countries. The summit will also be attended by 14 heads of international organizations, Saudi Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, U.S. President Joe Biden, and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida are among the key leaders attending the event. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia participated in the G20 summit to confirm its place in the International Economic Forum and its commitment to continue playing an active and positive role in achieving global economic stability. The UAE also participated as a guest of honor after receiving an invitation from the Indian uh, President Narendra Modi. UAE was represented by its commitment to clean energy investment in more than 40 countries around the world. In addition, Egypt also participated in the work of the G20 summit as the main guest of honor in the summit's work, which was will focus on various topics of interest to developing countries in general and African countries in particular, especially with regard to the importance of strengthening international efforts to facilitate integration of developing countries into the global economy.
Many countries around the world are facing extreme weather patterns, particularly due to climate change and environmental disasters. Greece, Turkey and Hong Kong were faced with heavy rains and floods caused by weather emergencies, which cost dozens of lives in addition to the damage to the infrastructure and economy. A rainstorm that lasted for three days in central Greece caused widespread destruction, human losses and billions of dollars in damage. Hurricane Daniel struck with heavy rain and high speed winds, trapping hundreds in their homes and forcing others to seek higher ground in the flood hit region of Thessaly. Torrentials or torrentials also swept away homes, destroyed infrastructure and destroyed agricultural crops after rainfall that lasted 24 hours. In an unprecedented disaster, a flood struck Istanbul in northwestern Turkey, leaving several dead and many missing after heavy rains fell on northern areas, claiming the lives of at least eight people. Meanwhile, Hong Kong suffered extensive damage due to torrential rains, which local authorities said were the heaviest on record since the 1800s. The weather condition led to many deaths and disrupted transportation in a number of industrial cities. These weather conditions are not a rare occurrence, but they have begun to increase significantly recently, while weather experts believe that climate change and environmental pollution play a negative role in such destructive weather phenomena.